The Night Beat starts right now. You had a cracked windshield from the impact of my husband's body. You had my husband's blood splattered on your white BMW. A courtroom face-off, a family's wishes not carried out. Tonight, the Carews family, their lives shattered by a drunk driver, talking to KSAT about what was lost and if they think justice was served. Plus, more changes coming for a problem property. The latest attempt from the city to get crime there under control. But first tonight, a new recommendation when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine. If you've been asking which vaccine is best, a CDC panel may make that decision a little bit easier. That panel saying that most people should get the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. That's instead of the Johnson and Johnson shot. Today's announcement comes after advisors reviewed new safety data about rare but potentially life threatening blood clots linked to the J and J vaccine. About 200 million people in the U.S. are fully vaccinated. About 16 million chose Johnson and Johnson. And this week marks one year since the COVID-19 vaccine first began to be administered here in Bear County. While major hospitals got shipments of that vaccine, healthcare workers in rural communities were still waiting for their shots. Yeah, now you can get the vaccine while sh shopping for groceries. But the night team's John Paul Barajas tells us while times have changed, some minds have not. The personal choice to not be vaccinated is like a middle finger to society. I don't care about you enough to do this for the sake of all of us moving forward. The pandemic is nearly two years in and new variants continue to pop up. Uvalde County Health Authority Jared Reading says he's frustrated COVID is still a health crisis. He blames those who refuse to get vaccinated. Here in Bear County, UT Health San Antonio Chief Medical Officer Bob Leverance also weighing in. There's well over 300 million people in this country, and if 40% of them are vulnerable to the disease, they're likely going to get it. In the first nine months of the pandemic without vaccines, the death toll was around 200,000 in the U.S. About a year later, with vaccines, we're up to 800,000. 600,000 more with the tools made to slow COVID-19. The issue? vaccine hesitancy, according to both doctors. They still vividly remember treating patients before protection was even available. Going into a patient room and feeling that you are risking your life. And the struggle to get vaccines to their communities once they were approved, especially in rural areas like Uvalde, who were struggling with vaccination rates, only 53% are fully vaccinated. We struggled to get this, we wanted this, we had a whole year without it. To see them say, no, I, I don't want this um, after how hard we fought to get it to get it out here is extremely frustrating. In Bear County, 69 percent of people five and older are fully vaccinated. And according to the CDC, the majority of hospitalizations and deaths have come from those who are not vaccinated, which is why both doctors we spoke to tonight said it is of the utmost importance to get vaccinated and boosted for having any large gatherings this holiday. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Our COVID-19 risk level remains mild. Doctors want the caseload to remain low. And right now, our seven-day average at 231 cases per day. Our death toll stands at 4,962. When it comes to the vaccination rate in the U.S. military, more than 97% of active troops are vaccinated against COVID-19. That means some 35,000 service members are unvaccinated right now. Thousands of requests for exemptions are still being reviewed. So far, none have been granted. A grieving mother pleading for answers tonight. Her son, 18 year old Anthony Luna, never came home from school. His remains were found on private property on the southwest side of the county earlier this month. I need closure for him. I need I need answers. I want answers. I'm demanding answers. Here is the timeline of events. Anthony Luna was last seen August 27th. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that someone in a black car picked him up from Southwest High School that day. Investigators say that evidence places him near Loop 410 and Highway 90 on September 11th, but it is not clear if he was alive at that time. His remains were found on December 4th on Kearney Road. If you can help in the case, call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. All right, we're staying on top of this story. More changes surrounding that property. Residents called a problem in their neighborhood. A fence now blocks off a parking lot near the former bar turned after hours hangout spot. 
It's not exactly clear what it is. The owner of that parking lot says she is very happy to see that fence go up. There are bullet holes in that building. There were bullet holes over here. Neighbors are terrorized. We had Bear County towing contracted. The drivers were accosted at gunpoint, threatened to be killed if they didn't leave the, the vehicles alone. The building sits near Drexel and Hackberry on the city's east side. In a five month span, police were called to this area. In just five months, they were called here 73 times. The city posted a certificate to revoke occupancy on Friday. Residents nearby are hopeful they will finally see change. It's like a step forward. We've been waiting. This has been going on for two years, longer. And we have been waiting for so long for them to do something, anything. And just this past weekend, there was another shooting in the area. Police are saying they'll be questioning the man who was shot in hopes of catching that shooter. A night out ends in shots fired and a woman killed. Now police are looking for the person who pulled that trigger. Officers found the victim who was shot in the head on Hayes Street near New Braunfels around 1 this morning. They say several people left a bar and were hanging out on the corner there when someone started shooting. If you can help in this case, call police. It is a break in that you have to see and you can because it was caught on camera. Police are now going over that video after a man broke into the Filipino restaurant. Sorry, sorry in Leon Valley and stole one thing. He found our safe, um, so that was in a whole nother room in a different place um, that we don't have cameras on, so I'm not sure how that happened. Take a look at this video here. You can't clearly see the man's face, but Leon Valley police hope that someone might still recognize him. The man used something to shatter the entire glass front door of this restaurant. He made his way inside, but without setting off the alarm. This happened just before 2.30 this morning. The man stole that safe, walked out the back door of the restaurant, got into a Lexus sedan and drove off. If you recognize who this person is, call police. Investigators searching for new information in that movie set shooting in New Mexico. More specifically, they're looking at Alec Baldwin's cell phone. A judge signed off on a search warrant today. Now investigators want to see if there are any deleted videos, photos or messages related to the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Baldwin was holding a revolver during a rehearsal on the movie set when the shooting happened. A director also heard in that shooting. There are new developments when it comes to abortion. The FDA announcing health care providers are allowed to send abortion pills by mail now. That moves that now removes the requirement that medication be picked up in person. Today's announcement likely to lead to more legal challenges and more restrictions, especially in Republican led states. Lives lost among a trail of destruction. Now a legal battle beginning days after a deadly outbreak of tornadoes. Plus traveling for Christmas, what AAA predicts will be the two worst days and times to travel if you hope to be home for the holidays. And a family torn apart after a drunk driver killed a renowned San Antonio surgeon. Tonight, the K. Ruse family sits down with KSAT and they say they have a problem with the plea deal in this case. We're going to hear from them next on the night beat. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm. Hi, I'm Carmen and this is my husband, Joe Gomez. And on behalf of the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm, we wanna wish all of our San Antonio and surrounding communities a very Merry Christmas and a special Merry Christmas to our military families. Merry Christmas. They want their loved one to be remembered, not the woman who killed him. Just days after a courtroom confrontation with the drunk driver who killed Dr. Najee K. Ruz, the doctor's family sat down to talk about their loss, whether they feel justice was served, and about the pain of losing someone to a drunk driver. I wear his uh, wedding ring around my neck every single day. For Anthony K. Ruz, it is a constant reminder of his father a ring and these snapshots that show what a drunk driver took away. We have all these memories and we have all these reminders, but what do they do? It reminds us that we don't want memories. We want my dad. Sandra Vasquez K. Ruse lost her husband of 25 years. Anthony, his father, Walid, 
lost his twin brother. A roadside crash, a swerving drunk driver. Dr. Najee Karuz struck as he was riding in a bicycle lane. A renowned robotic surgeon, an avid cyclist, a loved one lost. You don't find men like this. You know, they're very, very rare, kind, um, talented, uh, giving. Uh, he, he loved surgery. Oh my gosh, he loved surgery. This is, you learn how to deal with the pain, but only you learn how to deal with the pain. The pain does not go away. You take the pain with you, everywhere. They are the emotions they carried with them into a Bear County courtroom, face to face with Melissa Peoples, who in February of 2019 shattered their world. The family says her blood alcohol level that night, two and a half times the legal limit. He saved lives, you took a life. He would have stopped and rendered aid. You left the scene and tortured us for three years until the deadline of a plea bargain. Melissa Peoples agreed to a plea bargain, a guilty plea in exchange for 15 years in jail, eligible for parole in less than four. The K. Ruse family doesn't agree with the deal. This permeated the whole community, cycling, Lebanese, medical, and I mean, I, I'm just disappointed. So behind the closed doors here at the Justice Center, how does a plea bargain work? Are the victim's family's wishes taken into consideration? Should they be? We always reach out to the victims to get their input. Uh, that's not the final determination in terms of what kind of a, a plea bargain offer we will make, but certainly their input is very important to us. But the district attorney says his office is always looking to improve. He's also very clear when it comes to drunk driving crashes causing the death of an individual, the laws need to be changed and the punishment increased for the K. Ruses and others like them. This is a heart-wrenching situation. And my heart goes out to, to the family because nothing obviously that we do is ever going to bring the doctor back. I hope people don't hear this story and then flip to the next channel and go on with their day. If anything, I hope people can just take a second from their day and think about what this loss means, what it would mean if they were in our shoes and try and internalize that in their daily life. Take a second, think about what if you were in their shoes. So when Melissa Peoples is eligible for parole and when she gets parole, maybe two very different things. The district attorney tells me, according to the parole board, people who have been convicted of the same crime that she has usually serve 75 to 80% of their sentence, meaning Peoples may be eligible in less than four years, but most convicted of similar crimes serve at least 10 years of their sentence. In the wake of the deadly outbreak of tornadoes, a lawsuit now filed. One of those tornadoes hit a candle factory in Mayfield, Kentucky last Friday. Workers there say they were told they would be fired if they left work ahead of the deadly storm. A spokesperson for the factory owners said that supervisor, supervisors have denied those accusations. Tornadoes touched down in several states, killing at least 85 people. Right now, 600 National Guard working across 18 hard-hit counties. FEMA is delivering generators, water, and food to the victims. We have an update on our KSAC community phone bank held yesterday, partnering with the Red Cross to benefit the tornado victims. The final tally for the money raised, more than $29,000. A huge thank you to all of our viewers who donated. They are the best. Well, are you trying to make it home for the holidays? AAA advising travelers to be aware. They say there are two days you really want to steer clear of. Those are next Thursday and Friday. The worst travel times for those days are expected to be between noon and 6 p.m. Traveling on Christmas Day may be a good idea. That's when minimal congestion is expected. Here in Texas, AAA expects more than 8 million Texans to be hitting the roads. That's a 27% increase from last year. And by the way, have you ever traveled by kayak? That's what these people were able to do as they enjoyed the holiday lights along the museum reach area of the San Antonio River. The display also included a 30 foot tall musical tree of lights near the locks and the dam. The San Antonio River Authority hosted the event. It's a tradition that attracts dozens of kayakers each and every year. I love those. I'd like all, to do that. Yeah, all decked out with lights like that. That's pretty neat. Maybe and next year we should have 
Caskey on a kayak. Yes. And he could be like doing his weather as part of that. Caskey yes. on a kayak with confetti. Yeah. Could oh. we do that? Oh. With the canyon. Oh, oh hey. Better, better. Caskey on a kayak. I don't with know if we can handle this. Canyon did Caskey Roan. <laughs> Bring on 2022. All right. All right, I want to talk about rain chances. They're going to jump quite a bit on Saturday. Tomorrow, a 10% chance, but by Saturday, we're talking about 60 to 70% chance. So uh, fairly scattered to widespread areas of rain and some pockets of heavy rain. So let's start with our rain when you can expect it. I know a lot of people have plans on Saturday, so let's get right to it. First of all, with what's happening, we've got this plume of moisture coming off the Pacific Ocean. The white and purple on the screen indicates high moisture content in the year. Air. And it's just a conveyor belt of Pacific moisture up above us that's coming in. So that's going to help out in terms of rainfall potential. But we also have an upper disturbance, this dip in the upper level flow over the western U.S. That's going to basically strengthen a little bit as it heads toward us and give us a, a hit of energy as we get into the weekend, along with the cold front that we've been talking about. So all those factors coming together to help squeeze out the rain from the clouds as we get into Saturday and even a little bit late Sunday. Tomorrow, more of the same. Here's Friday, 3 p.m. A decent amount of cloud cover, some breaks of sun and peaks of sunshine here and there into Saturday. That's when we start to see the cold front drop in a little bit of upper level support as well. And first thing in the morning around sunrise, a few hit or miss showers, but a few hours after sunrise, we're expecting the rain to become more widespread. This is 10 a.m. and along the cold front, uh, fairly widespread showers, a few thunderstorms, some pockets of heavy rain. And where we see those heavier downpours set up, you could quickly get an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall in just over a few hours on Saturday through the noon hour, early afternoon, and then it starts to taper off and move far east of San Antonio by Saturday evening. So Saturday morning through early afternoon, outdoor plans likely to be rainy. I think the highest likelihood is between about 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Temperatures are going to take a big hit, too, as uh, the wind picks up. Wind gusts on Saturday, I mean, we're talking from 10 a.m. through the afternoon, probably between 40 and 45 miles per hour. Okay, let's talk temperatures really quickly. 69 this morning, 80 degrees, the high temperature. We missed the record by one degree in San Antonio. For the most part, we're near 70 and into the 70s. 72 in town here, 72 Hondo, 69 meanwhile in Kerrville. And tomorrow morning, we'll start the day in the upper 60s and then make it back to near 80 degrees. The record high, by the way, 82. You'll still notice the humidity and a fair amount of gray. Just more of the same tomorrow. South and west of town, you get to Carrizo Springs, Catula, Pleasanton, a little bit warmer into the 80s for afternoon highs. Saturday temperatures, however, I think we're going to start the day in the morning up through about 9, 10 a.m., around 70 degrees. Then by the noon hour, closer to 50, and we'll stay there for the rest of the day. Sunday near 50. You can squeeze in some outdoor activities, just some evening and nighttime, widely scattered light showers. And next week, Low humidity in 60s. Ooh, all right. Thank you, Adam. All right, for years, Judson was stable. Mm -hmm. Stability. Rutledge, Rackley, you know, I'm sure I'm Frank Arnold. Yep. I'm leaving, I almost forgot <laughs> Coach Arnold. So, I mean, uh, now they've gone through a number of coaches in the last few years. And they're looking for stability in one of their very own, Mark Soto. He played football there, graduated for the Judson Rockets. I mean, he was a star player for them, and he's all about riding the ship for Judson football. And is Dak Prescott in a slump? He'll tell you what he thinks coming up. Mark Soto is back with the Judson Rockets. Tonight he was named athletic coordinator and head football coach. Soto graduated from Judson in 1991 and played under legendary head coach D.W. Rutledge. He would later serve as an assistant coach for Jim Rackley. In 2012, he left Judson for San Marcos High School and his first head coaching gig. After eight seasons there, he moved to Johnson High School in 2020, where he went 19-3 and in two seasons. He's back with J-Rock, and he's loving it. It's just a special night for my whole family. And I think that's what's most important. You know, it is homecoming. I am coming home. And uh, that was the main reason for uh, making the move. Nothing to do with Johnson. They uh, love him to death. Um, and I'm always forever indebted to them. Uh, but it was about coming home and, and righting the ship. And the Judson Board of Trustees also approved the hiring of Robert Irvin. He's the new athletic director and head football coach for Veterans Memorial High School. He's been with the school since its opening in 2016 and served as the Patriots offensive coordinator.
His stock is on the rise, so UTSA running back Sincere McCormick plans to forego his senior season and declare for the NFL draft. He tweeted the news today thanking his family, his teammates, Coach Trailer, and his staff, the city of San Antonio, UTSA, and Meep Meep Nation. Sin says he won't play in Frisco Bowl next week, but plans to join them for the bowl activities and help cheer them to a victory. It's a bittersweet news for UTSA fans, but many have responded by saying thank you and best of luck in the NFL. Yesterday, UTSA football added 13 student athletes on the first day of early signing period, and 10 of those are from Texas, including two from Central Catholic High School and offensive lineman Ben Rios and DeAndre Marshall. So what does Coach Trailer like about them? Size and character, IQ, came to count. Really wanted to be here. Um, just very loyal to the 210. They're very much about UTSA. And um, we're excited about both those young men. Coach said he can still sign up to seven more players. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback Dak Prescott is struggling and he knows it. Dak has eight touchdown passes and six interceptions in his six games back after suffering a calf strain. He said he's fully healthy, 100% healthy, and he's heard some of the negative talk about his recent play. Some say he's in a slump, but Dak doesn't feel that way. But as I said, I don't necessarily feel like I am, so... Um, but I do realize I'm not playing my best ball. I haven't been playing it. Um, have made some poor decisions, I guess you can say, but uh, th that's kind of part of it. I wouldn't say it's um, slump material, but I'm definitely not up to my standard expectations. And when you play at a high level, that's what you create. So uh, I'm glad the people have the same expectations for my, for, the, for my game as I do for myself. So that's fine. Defensive end Demarcus Lawrence and running back Tony Pollard were limited in practice today. Both are dealing with foot issues. Dallas will play at the Giants Sunday at noon. When the Jacksonville Jaguars host the Houston Texans Sunday at noon, they'll do so without head coach Urban Meyer because the team fired him last night. The Jags are certainly a mess. As for the game itself, is Texans rookie QB Davis Mills excited to face Jags rookie quarterback Trevor Lawrence, the first overall draft pick. It'll be pretty cool, I guess, because we're both rookies, both from Georgia, but I haven't really paid too much attention to their offense. I'm more, more so focused on their defense. And that's what he should be focused on. Boxing is coming up to the AT&T Center after the break. Spurs up and down season continues. They lost at home to Charlotte last night, 131 to 115. Silver and Black never led and trailed the Hornets by as many as 21 points. Gordon Hayward was on fire, scoring a game high 41 points, and Charlotte outshot the Spurs from three point range, 18 to 12. So the Spurs will now hit the road for four straight games, and it's a tough one to begin tomorrow night at 8 at the Utah Jazz. Saturday night is fight night at the AT&T Center. The main event features undefeated light heavyweight Mexican boxer Gilberto Ramirez, who arrived in town Tuesday. He met with the media yesterday afternoon for an open workout and talked about facing his tough opponent, Cuban-born Yaneski Gonzalez, a man who trains out of Miami and has won five of his last six fights by way of knockout. Oh, but he's a tough opponent. He's been fighting uh, with good fighters, and he been knock him out. And <clears throat> he come forwards all the time. But I think I had a better skill than them, and and that's how I wanna put everything what I did in the gym, and and that's all what I want, and put a great show for the fan. Ramirez was honored last night during the Spurs game, got his own jersey, and even worked the corner for the Coyote during quarters. You can read more about the upcoming fight night <laughs> on the instant replay page of KSAT.com. The Coyote might want to be careful. I got to tell you, though, I, you, that makes you like the guy right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He'll put on the ring, you know, the trainer jacket. Get he's ready out there to and have some yeah. fun. Right. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. At late breaking tonight, a call for a crash turned into a homicide investigation. This is the scene on Albert Walk, just south of Woodlawn Lake. San Antonio police say they believe the driver was shot a block away from here. He managed to drive away but crashed and died there on scene. No arrests will continue to follow it. The latest on GMSA.